Cisco AnyConnect and Umbrella, DNS and Web Full Proxy. All right, so first thing in roaming computers, what we need to make sure that we have enabled is the AnyConnect SWG, right? So that web proxy capability or web gateway or secure web gateway. All right, so once we enable that, we can go ahead. I'm gonna start right from scratch here. I'm gonna build out a DNS policy first from scratch. Now, what you don't wanna do is is overcomplicate your policy. So we're gonna use DNS layer security to do that first line of defense. And then we're gonna do the content security based on web policies, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab an identity. Specifically, I'm looking at these two hosts here internally. And again, we're using AnyConnect here with the umbrella client. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a new security policy or setting um, that's gonna be assigned to this policy. And we're gonna create from scratch. And so from a DNS layer perspective, again, you might wanna select a few of these. You might want all of these. Um, but I'm gonna pick all the categories here to block. and we save that out. From a content perspective, we're gonna go custom, and we're not gonna do anything here, but I am gonna create a new custom setting, and I'm gonna leave it empty. And why I'm going to do this is, is that we wanna make sure that we make it easy to understand where we're blocking. So if we're blocking content in DNS and we're blocking content in web, um, it just makes it a little bit more challenging, right? Because you don't, what policies did you set in DNS versus what policies did you set in web? So here we're gonna leave it empty, but we did create a category for, or sorry, a uh, setting for it. Same thing with applications. We're not gonna set anything here, but we did create a application setting that we could modify if we wanted to, but we don't. We're gonna turn off file inspection because we're not gonna proxy at all. Okay, that we can use the defaults here and we can go ahead and give this a name. Let's just review. We can see that intelligent proxy is still checked here even though SSL decryption and able IP layer enforcement is disabled. So let's just save this out. And oh, I forgot to name it. So go back in, let's name it. And we'll also uncheck that enable intelligent proxy. And we'll save it. All right, so perfect. So we know we have that for the two identities, those two hosts, it's at the top of the policy. It's only focused on DNS, right? So we still get that first line of defense. Now let's move in and add a web policy. You can see there's pack file, you can have Sam L. Um, I'm gonna focus on those two hosts that we have. Host one and two, we'll go ahead and hit next. I'm gonna enable HTTPS inspection and we're gonna actually test that too. When we do that though, a couple of things. First, we can create a category that um, what we can do is exclude from decryption. So this could be, um, you know, things like um, health, finance, um, webmail, you might even do social networking. Um, I'm only gonna pick financial and health and fitness and webmail. And we're gonna do some testing. So that means we do not want to decrypt any one of those categories. All others that are HTTPS, we want to decrypt. At the bottom here, you can see install root certificate. So I'm going to show you what happens when you don't. I think most people know. 
Um, you can use group policy to push this out. Um, I'm just going to do a manual install on the endpoint. All right, so category settings or content settings, sorry, um, or security settings. What we're going to do here is again name it something meaningful. We'll create from scratch. And we want malware, command and control, and phishing attacks. We'll hit next. Now we'll get into the categories, okay? But let's create a category setting, right? So again, I guess if you, you use the very same thing for policy, you can keep them the same. Um, in this case, I, I name it the same as the policy. So I know which setting is assigned to which policy. So I'm just going through and picking some categories here that I might want to block. And we'll test some of these out as well. Maybe proxy anonymizer might be a good one. Anyways, you can see that the list is fairly comprehensive, right? Hacking, social science, hate, humor, sports, hunting. You've got streaming audio, video, illegal downloads, illegal activities. Anyways, you get the idea. There's a lot here to choose from. And we'll just, yeah, I think that's about it. I don't think there's anything that we missed obvious. Again, this is just for testing, but sure, there's a, arguably a couple more that you could add here. But anyways, you get the idea. We'll hit next application settings here we're going to actually we'll create new here as well and what we'll do is find box maybe for cloud storage where are you box oh there it is and if you actually click on the little cog wheel you can see that we could block and uh, uploads for example um, you've got a couple other settings if you want to be granular we're just gonna block it outright we'll hit next we can add uh, destination lists here as well we're gonna have file inspection yes and that's gonna be using signatures and heuristics and file reputation I'm going to leave the default block page. We'll give this a name. And we'll save it. All right, so that's it on the umbrella side, right? We've got the configuration set up. It's a matter of going in now and doing some testing. Let's see what the actual outcome is. So we can see umbrella is active here. And we can see that um, that we're protected by DNS, encryption is on, and we can also see that we're protected by web protection, and you can see the umbrella proxy address. So let's see if it's actually working. Can it be this easy? Right, this user's remote and goes to td.com, and if everything's right here, it should not decrypt it. This is a financial site. Check the certificate. Certificate path, and you can see there's no man in the middle there. Okay, good. Let's go to gmail.com. Again, this shouldn't be uh, decrypted. Certificate path, and no man in the middle. Now we'll go to LinkedIn.com. So this will come under a social site. Now this wasn't the one that we excluded. So it is an HTTPS and look at this, we get an error. So let's see what's going on here. 
and we can see certificate path is actually from umbrella but it's not trusted root CA okay so let's minimize this and let's go ahead and install that root certificate now you would use group policies to push this out right select the store next finish say yes okay okay let's bring up that page again refresh it all right no certificate warning good let's see if we're actually doing man in the middle and look at that now that was pretty easy right no WCCP no redirection no network stuff no he heavy decryption stuff and it's done let's go to that adult site to see if it's blocked look at that content filtering blocked it and let's go to box.com and you know what that should be blocked right based on the application and you can see it's blocked now we didn't test the DNS stuff right I've done that in lots of other videos but remember you still have that first line of defense the DNS layer look at that we go to Dropbox and it works right why because that was not an application that we did block but we do see that we're doing man in the middle because it is an HTTPS connection so let's close that out let's quickly look at our settings here we should start seeing a lot more packets go through we can see now we're at 56 um, you see DNS security here as well close this out pretty easy right we're talking 10 or 15 minutes and I've got proxy that's following my roaming user let's check the logs gmail.com we can look at the full details here not a whole lot in this one here we see the policy rule name that was hit the other thing we could do is add more fields DNS type policy rule protocol refer status code content file extension you can see a bunch of other that are listed there as well okay so let's have a look at maybe box.com there's the destination you see Dropbox is the application here's the refer and again if we look at the full details all in the single pane here we see the application destination the refer the user agent the status code the content type the application name the categories the policy that it was hit all right let's check one more here and again I selected proxy here so if you look at the filter type the response you can see I'm just looking at proxy data not the DNS data as well so again you can see that this was hit and blocked by adult themes or categories that um, um, that we're blocking and then again if you look at the details here you can see the the actions block the, the policy that was um, invoked or used in this particular case so look at that we've got what 14 minutes and we've got proxy following our users pretty cool